Hi, Jeff Spira here again, and today I want to talk to you about pangas. So, what is a panga? Well, um, you know, I get a lot of posts uh, from people that say, I'm just using the panga as some sort of marketing ploy. The real pangas that they saw in Mauritius or Bora Bora or wherever don't look anything like, uh, like my design, so I'm just I'm just using it as some sort of evil scheme to try and get you to buy. Well, if you look in <clears throat> Wikipedia, it defines, describes the panga as a specific shape and size and type of boat. And it was funded by the uh, World Bank in, in the 19, late 1970s or mid 1970s, I think. And it was designed to be specifically powered by a 70 horse Yamaha outboard. And um, um, and it was intended for use in commercial fishing in the in the ocean. Um, but it also talks about there was there was a, a wooden boat style that they kind of styled the panga after. Uh, it was built down in uh, in uh, Latin America somewhere. I, I think they made them in Lower um, the East Cape of of Baja California as well. So my design is really the plywood um, equivalent to the, the fiberglass pangas that uh, um, that the World Bank funded back in the 70s. So, you know, there are quite a number of fiberglass panga builders even today. If you Google it now, you come up with, uh, you know, a bunch of uh, fiberglass ocean fishing boats that uh, that are called the panga. In fact, there's a um, there's a group called the United States Panga Builders Group that uh, you can find online, and it lists a number of people. I think most of them are in Florida, but I've seen some in California. So I don't know if they were um, also built here or whether they were just imported from well imported. They were moved here from Florida. I'm not sure. So. But in that fiberglass panga, uh, U.S. fiberglass panga builders group, uh, it says this about it, about pangas. It says, inspired by pangas from Central America and around the world, a handful of builders makes pangas here in the States. These are a far cry from the stripped down 1970s versions, however. Many resemble high-end sport fishing boats rather than the utilitarian little workhorses from which they descended. U.S. panga builders have stayed faithful to certain design elements, such as roughly four to one uh, length to beam ratio and a shallow hull that preserve low running costs and sea kindly handling. Uh, but they're also providing the increased horsepower, beefy construction, and uh, onboard anemones that American anglers are really looking for. So, here's one of the commercial panga builders called Panga Marine. So, uh, and here's my version of this 23 footer. So, so please spare the comments on how I'm using an e evil marketing trick here. <laughs> Um, pangas are really sea boats. They're designed to run in the ocean. They handle rough and choppy waters. Um, since they're deeper V than my V bottom dories, so they'll move out faster in rougher water. Um, I call them deep V, but they're really not. Uh, they re they're like the original boats, which had, you know, a variable V. Um, it changes along the fore and aft axis. So. Um, it's not like the modern deep V, um, you know, racing and tournament sport fishing boats. Those are intended for, you know, all out speed and they, and they have, have to carry a lot of power to get there too. So, um, mine don't have that solid V with a constant width aft sections, you know, cause, um, they're designed to be preserve low running costs and keep sea kindly handling, just like the Panga builders say, so. So I, I hear questions like, what's the answer to, the, what's the dead rise of your, of your uh, deep V holes uh, of the pangas? And, you know, my answer is typically, well, it varies. <laughs> depends on the boat, depends on the, on, on where you're talking about on the boat. So the, again, it's, 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 it maintains that excellent sea handling and, and low power requirements for, a, a, you know, an offshore fishing boat. So. 
Um, in any way, in any event, uh, these uh, perform really well with pretty low power. Um, you know, the, the standard 21 footer, which is what the, the World Bank funded, uh, was built around that 70 horse Yamaha. And, and uh, um, here's my 21 footer, which is the same as that size, called the Tiburon. And um, it's doing in the mid 30s with 70 horses set at a, a moderate cruise. So. So that is actually a better performance than the original uh, Pangas uh, of the time because they're heavier and made, built out of fiberglass. So, so my, my boats are also uh, excellent in bigger lakes, and, and including the Great Lakes and big open bays and rivers, um, anywhere you can uh, run into some choppy water. So they really shine off the coast as well. So here's one along the west coast of Florida. Now again, this 21 footer is called the Tiburon, and it's a popular choice for smaller ocean fishing operations. You know, from solo up to four or five people who regularly fish the coastlines and want an easily trailered boat. It tows very, very well behind uh, most cars and pickups. So. Uh, like the Yamaha version, I recommend 70 horse for most use, but I'm not, I'm not pick, pick, picky about Yamaha engines. You can use anyone's engine. So, uh, But you can go as high as 200 horses on this, um, but I think that would be overboard uh, on this boat. 200 horsepower would be just too much. I mean, uh, for it, it just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, keep your handy, see kindly nature and... Uh, and low cost operation. So, um, if we go up from there, uh, we go to the 23 footer. I call this the Ixtapa. And back in the 80s and 90s, they used to call these Super Pangas, um, at least the ones they sold around here. So, it's designed around about 100 horse outboard, and it'll haul a bigger crew out for fishing or go farther offshore. Um, a lot of them, I've seen them out in the tuna grounds here. So, you know, 100 miles offshore, um, 60, 80, 100 miles all the time. So guys run them out in the morning and, uh, and, and to the outer banks and go tuna fishing with them around here. So... Um, great for the offshore islands, um, you know, just be a good solid boat for that sort of thing. So, um, I also have come up with a uh, 26 footer. Um, this is this one I call the Manzanillo, um, and I call it an Ultra Panga. Um, it's it's a big big 
boat. Um, it's similar performance than the smaller ones and runs on like 120 horsepower instead of 70 or 100 for the smaller ones. So. I also shrunk this down to 18 feet uh, in a boat called the Veracruz. Now, other Panga builders also build 18-footers. It's a pretty common size for it, uh, but not very much smaller than that. So, And it, this one runs with a 50 horse. It is, is a good recommended motor for it. So, um, By request, I also shrunk one down uh, for a local builder here in Southern California who wanted to use it at the local kelp beds and offshore um, uh, sunken ships and, um, and you know, uh, what do you call them? Um, hmm. The um, uh, artificial reefs that we have a lot of here. They, they, they pile uh, old, you know, concrete and stuff down in the, in the, uh, in the offshore area to build, to build reefs that the fish are attracted to, so. Uh, it's called the Robalo, uh, which really stands for, is a, is a type of fish. It's really a snook that is caught a lot along both coasts of Mexico. and It's a really good eating fish too. So, um, And this one runs with 25 horses just fine. So um, you can pick it up a little from there if you like, 40, something like that if you want. But uh, 25 is perfect. And I also got a few uh, calls for a 12-footer. Uh, which I designed and built, and this is called the Bahia. Now, the first three were built in Australia for some reason. I don't know if they have some sort of areas where that they can use with smaller boats or or they just like the convenient size of them. Um, popular boat for it. I, I know a lot of people car top them, and uh, um, they can... One, there's one that uh, uh, has extra wheels in the back so they can... Uh, you know, launch it through the surf. I, I assume that's off the beach somewhere. Um, there, there's, there's been one built in the U.S. that I know of, and it was primarily built as a duck hunting boat. So it's got, uh, you know, ba painted in duck blind camouflage colors, and and has uh, some uh, some sides that pop up that uh, you know to make a duck blind out of it. So. And I've also uh, filled a line between the 12 and 16 with a 14-footer that I call the Ensenada. <clears throat> I sold a number of plans, uh, but I haven't seen any pictures yet. As soon as I do, I'll, I'll put them up on my uh, blog in, in the website. So, Listen, if you want to know more about any of these models, uh, go to the website and download the free study prints. Uh, it'll give you the displacement, you know, the loads. And it has a bill of materials on it, so you can calculate the costs uh, to build it in your area. Um, and it also has the uh, suggested horsepower and maximum horsepower. So, In any event, these are my modern-day home-built Pangas. Also, please do subscribe to this uh, uh, YouTube channel and... Um, and hit the bell so that you get notified of new uh, videos that are posted. Um, if you're interested in any of my boats, uh, please go by my website. Uh, and it's got uh, um, lots of great stuff on there. Uh, it also has an insider section where I've got additional uh, information. And, and you can freely download the uh, manuals that I talk about and such. Um, and... Uh, um, all, it, all it takes is you joining and putting in your email address so I have a way to get a hold of you. Um, but please, please do that. And again, thank you very much for watching.